Here in this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over testing cannabis plant material for mycotoxins so you can be a better and informed consumer as to just what these are and why they are of concern and should be tested for on any analytical report. All right, let's go over testing cannabis plant material for mycotoxins. Well, as always, here's the research article uh, that the summary will be provided for. If you want to learn more about some of the details, you're welcome to take a look at this for yourself. So mycotoxins come from mold. They are toxic secondary metabolites of mold that can proliferate in the same environment that is supportive for cannabis growth. Mycotoxins are known risk within the food safety industry in general. They are a concern in cannabis plants because of the suspected carcinogens causing acute and chronic toxicity. However, those mycotoxins aren't limited just to cannabis. They are um, products of mold and mold can grow just about anywhere on walls, on couches and fabrics. Uh, so again, be aware of this is not just a cannabis problem. This is something in general that's important for it to be tested in cannabis. But keep in mind that those mycotoxins are not visible, odorless, chemical released by mold and spore for formations, and that's what makes them such a concern. So what's the health threat? You know, when we talk about mycotoxins, so they've been linked to kidney and liver damage, reproductive disorders, and immune suppression. Chemist material can also be contaminated with mycotoxins during transport storage as well as processing. Given the known health risks, associated with exposure to these mycotoxins testings is an important safety measure for consumers. And it's not just cannabis, it's been tested for um, other crops as well, other food related crops um, is a real major uh, concern uh, because of the damage it can do to human health in general. So very important, it is included with cannabis testing. Now there's also aflatoxins as well as others. Well, particularly dangerous are the aflatoxins, a type of mycotoxin produced by Aspergillus, a flagellus, a fungal species with uh, which is a potent carcinogen. It's kind of give an example of how it looks, and we can see this highly branched appearance. It allows these like spores to kind of break off very easily, uh, get airborne, and uh, be basically transported that way. Um, it does produce aflatoxins in warm and humid conditions, typically around that 33 degrees Celsius, 91.4 degrees Fahrenheit, and 0.99 water activity. So those are the ideal conditions, but it can, of course, produce these outside of those conditions. Even acute exposure can be life-threatening if the dose of aflatoxin is large enough, as the result in aflatoxins could cause severe liver failure, a major concern. There's different aflatoxins, so B1 is considered the most toxic, but B2, G1, and G2 uh, must also be considered as they have result from decaying vegetation in soils when warm, most moist conditions exist. There are regulations now that set limits on allowable levels of toxins in foods because of the great concern. So the World Health Organization, the WHO, uh, according to Food Safety Digest from uh, WHO, consumption of food or product containing more than one milligram per kilogram, basically essentially one uh, part per million of aflatoxin can be enough to lead to life-threatening aflatoxosis and liver failure. So one part per million, a very, very small dose. Alternately, sustained exposure to lower doses on the order of 20 to 120 uh, micrograms per kilogram daily for a period of one to three weeks of aflatoxin B1 specifically can cause acute toxicity and also be potentially lethal. So as we can see, the reason why there's such a great concern, it takes a very low dose to get a potential lethal end result. So we want to screen our cannabis for mycotoxins. So both recreational and medical cannabis must now be screened for mycotoxins derived from microbial contamination. This can be done in a number of analytical techniques, but due to the chemical complexities of the sample extracts and the polar and or liable nature of some mycotoxins, they're good candidates for um, LCMS or LCMSSMS, which is looking for that kind of liquid chromatography and microspecs there. This is, of course, an extreme example where we're looking at mold developing on the um, bud here, but realize mycotoxins uh, can be deadly at a very small level. So even though <coughs> the product may look clean, we want to make sure we're still getting it tested because even something that looks clean could still contain harmful levels of mycotoxins. 
So lastly, those safety requirements. Uh, do you know that cannabis is susceptible to mycotoxins? And this kind of gives you some information here. More than 40 years ago, a paper was published uh, that discussed the unfavorable condition to these and produce aflatoxins within cannabis. And they can occur also in other uh, plant material as well. State testing, though, uh, regulations typically have a maximum allowable limit of mycotoxin detection on the sample. However, there is variation in exactly how the limit is applied between states, so keep that in mind. As an example, the Illinois Department of Agriculture requires each of the five main mycotoxins to be separately uh, separated under the limit of less than the 20 micrograms uh, per kilogram. But in Nevada and California, the total sum of detectable aflatoxins, which include B1, B2, G1, G2, combined must be under that theoretical limit. So this is important consideration. Some are looking at the individual mycotoxins, some are looking at the sum total. So keep that in mind, look at your state's regulations. For example, New Mexico's Department of Health enforces one of the tightest restrictions of mycotoxin presence, requiring the collective amounts of all five mycotoxins to sum to be less than the 20 micrograms per kilogram. So important to know the regulations, understand the regulations, and realize the potential severe implications of presence of mycotoxins as a continuing part to be a, a well-informed and educated consumer.